Hello everybody and welcome to another PMP end of month review. What is this? Well, this is where we sit down once a month and review the uh, end of month submissions put into the monthly event in the PMP, that is the Painters Motivating Painters Facebook group. So uh, basically I sit down here, I look at everybody, uh, we invite all of our uh, folks to submit one uh, mini a month with targeted feedback, asking for something specific they'd like to improve on. Uh, and then I spend some time and go through, try to answer everyone's uh, questions and show them where they can improve. Uh, so there's a lot of submissions this month, are there, as there are every month, so I'll try to be quick. Uh, for now, we're still going to do the review every submission thing. That may be changing in months to come. We'll see, just because of the sheer number of them. We might have to find a different way to do this. Uh, but at any rate, uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and stick with everyone. And if you want to join us on your hobby journey, regardless of these end-of-month review events, the reality is the community is a great place, a positive place, uh, where we welcome everybody from uh, beginners to masters. Anybody who's looking to take their next step on the hobby journey is welcome here. So... Uh, with that being said, let's uh, let's jump into it and uh, we'll take a, a look. Uh, if you do want to join up, link is down in the description. So, uh, start back at the beginning of uh, July with William uh, looking for uh, beard, skin, and non-metallic feedback. Sure. So, taking a look at this guy, uh, I think the beard looks really nice. Uh, we could pitch, pick out a few more of the individual hairs with a distinct color down here in the lower parts of the beard. Um, they don't need to be bright, but they can still be clean, and I think that's where we might lose just a little bit. Uh, the non-metallic uh, effect sells on the gold more than it does on the axe. Part of it is you got to be really careful with stuff like this. This will automatically break anybody's belief, so it's very important to be clean and precise with this. At the same time, we need a little more number one. So again, just to refresh everybody, one is the brightest your miniature can be, five is the darkest, so one, two, three, four, five, three being your mid-tone. I'm just going to use that shorthand. Um, <clears throat> this needs a little more one and a little more two. It goes from its darkest color uh, and then sticks a lot in four and three, and then we don't have enough two and one. So some of that would be good, and then we want to just focus on uh, mainly cleaning up the, uh, you know, the, the blends, keeping things smooth. It's important with non-metallic to be very precise uh, more than almost anything. So... Uh, but yeah, there you go. Hope that helps. Uh, all right, next up, William. Uh, different William. Uh, and uh, feedback on the duel. Sure. So I think we can get most of what we need out of here. Um, I think it definitely conveys the good versus evil. I like the light versus dark. Um, I think that's fine. I think that all sells. Uh, I think your biggest area of opportunity is you have two very mismatched in size figures, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But what it means is that you've got to make sure you're drawing attention equally. And so some of the things on her might be even a little brighter to counteract that. At the same time, the giant cave swig himself, he lacks a little bit of definition. Like, yes, these things are picked out. But the biggest area for opportunity I, uh, uh, of uh, improvement I actually see is with the, uh, with the, 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 the big swig. Um, he just doesn't quite have the detail and the variation, especially on the skin and stuff like that. I understand he's probably supposed to be in a little bit of shadow, but a little bit more contrast on him uh, would really help. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the main thing that jumps out of me. Textures and the color choice, those all work, and I think the evil ground versus good ground, that, that works fine. You might try mixing them a little more. They end kind of very abruptly. They should be mixed into each other just a little bit more. Okay, next up, Andy. Uh, so we've got our, uh, our Tyrion Lannister bust. Uh, looking for feedback on the face. Sure. So with bust faces, it's really a matter of working in nuance. Uh, and here what we lack is a lot of the additional color and definition, especially on a bust of this size. So having things like 5 o'clock shadow and blue tones here, having things like red tones in the, in the T section being stronger, Right? Having things like purple tones under the eyes and making sure that these have the appropriate pink tones here in the, in the under the eye section. Face painting at you know this kind of scale, you really have a lot more detail you can work in. And so you've got to take that up appropriately. And that means a lot of soft, subtle colors. Um, skin tone is unbelievably varied, has a lot of different colors in it. And that's what you want to try to capture when you move up to that scale. All right, next up, uh, Eric. Uh, 
basically wondering how he could uh, make some, you know, improve some of his contrast and making the the glint and the chest plate stronger, uh, and then composition. Sure. So yeah, I mean, I do think there's a chance here for composition or for for contrast improvement. Um, he is bright. You could take it a little brighter. And I would encourage you to go look at like Andy Wardle's work on Nurgle guys, and that'll be a really good, uh, really good example of sort of how to take it up. Now, as to what to do, well, one of the easiest ways is you clearly have a light coming from this direction. So this is a, a dividing line in the center. You could just run a strong shadow down this side of the line, and that would actually make this seem brighter. So if you feel like you've reached your maximum contrast, then you got to think about where can I put shadows nearby. That being said, I do think you could take the very edge of this up even higher, uh, especially since we're dealing with white up on the face, and it's always going to tend to draw attention. Uh, so that's sort of my main thing. The other just small elements that jump out at me just very quickly are when it comes to stuff like the bone and things like that, make sure you're running that striation up a little higher, should have a little more contrast on that as well. Um, those are the two big ones that jump out at me at this point. So I uh, hope that helps. Uh, all right, next up, uh, David, uh, first time submitting uh, and basically um, just looking for some constructive criticism, sure. So I think this fig is really nice. Um, it's got it captures the uh, the reflectiveness of these materials really well. They look like shiny leather, so I dig that. Um, some of the things that that do jump out to me as could maybe have a little bit more um, activity going on with them is stuff like um, the hair on the front side. Let's go back to this picture um, where we could have more of the individual striations and lines coming out of the hair. Um, and then kind of the texture of stuff like, like all of these are kind of equally shiny and seem to be made of the same material, but I don't think that's actually the case. So you have good volumetric highlights. They're really nice, but we're not separating through texture or anything. So like the leather boots have no scratches or dents or dings on them, even though leather tends to scratch very easily. Same with the, the, uh, the her bow, right? So like having a little more texture on things like the bow, the striations in the hair, the texture in the leather, that's what jumps out at me as your big opportunity here. I think color and contrast wise, you're actually in the right place. Um, this is actually a really nice level of contrast on this mini. Um, I think it works. I think the non-metallic effect uh, sells. I think that's uh, really great. So yeah, maybe I think for you know sort of a next project, look and see if you can help separate some of the materials by texture and that will really help. But overall, I think it's a, a beautiful, gorgeous piece and, the, and the, the highlighting, especially on the face, really sells for me. I, I like that quite a lot. Okay, Mark Tan uh, with his pox walker. Questions about the denim and the bone. Sure. So uh, I think the denim works. You could probably scratch it a little bit more, a little thinner, and make sure that it's got some higher highlights and some deeper shadows. So I think contrast in general in the denim is your biggest uh, item. But texture-wise and color-wise, I think you're in the right place. On the bones, the issue we have is those need to be more striated and heavily um, segmented. Like what I'm noticing there is they don't have... Uh, they don't have the level of sort of uh, individual striations and brightness. There's not enough contrast there. So I would take the lower part of the bone near the skin up a little higher, um, and that'll actually help the, the dark pink you have around the rotten skin seem even deeper um, because you'll have a, a very bright next to a very dark, and so that'll actually help that stand out as well. Um, but overall, good coloration, great work on the skin. He looks absolutely disgusting, and, you know, that's the goal. So you did it. All right, next up, Brandon, uh, looking for some feedback on the Battlemaster from Battletech. Sure, so these guys are tough to paint because they're actually in, even though they're the same size as a standard 28 mil miniature, they're actually much scaled down, uh, like they're a much smaller scale uh, because these things are actually like 20, 20, you know, plus meters tall in real life, in real life, uh, <laughs> in the verisimilitude of the world. Uh you know, the answer is these things are very hard to paint to a high quality level. I'm going to be honest with you because they're just not made for that. Like when you get, when you shrink scale this far, it's actually really hard to get that level of quality out of them um, and have them look right in scale because these things would be so massive and like they would cast such huge shadows like this guy being, you know, 20 meters tall or something he would have like this plate on the center of his chest that's cut down would just cast this unbelievably dark shadow underneath it, right? 
uh, and you know we can't you if you paint it that uh, sort of obliquely it will just feel weird right even though that's probably right in scale um, so the my general advice is um, you know you, you said like how can you improve non-metallic on surfaces like this uh, I'm not sure what in here is non-metallic so I'm not sure like I don't know which part you're picking out there as that um, yeah, I'm not sure what's meant to be non-metallic. So that's going to be our first challenge. And unless you just mean like having the reflectiveness of the enamel paint be higher. Um, which in that case, sure. Uh, the, and, and also either your next question is, you know, mechs have a lot of flat panels. What's the best way to go about painting those highlights at the top or bottom? It, it doesn't matter. It, it literally does not matter. It's, it's all an artistic expression. None of it's real lighting. Um, so yes, you can, you can do toward the bottom, toward the top, all that kind of thing. Um, I tend to prefer toward the bottom. I think it's, it's more realistic on, on something like this, but you know, whatever. Uh, in general with, a, with something like this, you want to think in a true like volumetric thing that the lighting is going to be cast in these broad areas. And then you're, you know, calling out the small area, the small little details. Um, and then, you, you know, you said, feedback on painting black. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the dark gray works. The key is you still need to use real black to shadow it. So like in his arm, for example, that's back up, you'd want to, uh, you know, you'd want to be using some normal black toward the back of the panels to create some depth of, uh, of shadow there. Okay. Hope that helps, Brandon. I mean, Battletech mechs are tough. They're the equivalent of painting, uh, not even that equivalent. They're actually a smaller scale than that. I was going to say they're like painting six millimeter humans, but they're actually even a smaller scale than that. Um, so it's, you know, it's just really hard to get that level of detail into them. Um, that's why I love battle. I love battle tech to the depth of my soul. And I don't ever paint these tiny miniatures cause I just find them uncompelling personal taste. Uh, that's why I'm trying to find somebody who can print me like, uh, Imperial knight sized battle mechs. That is something you could go nuts on. Anyway. Alex, uh, first time submission, struggling with faces and looking for areas to focus on towards display. Sure. I mean, Alex, my biggest advice for you is I can, like, it's contrast, contrast, contrast. I mean, 100%. That's that's where we need to go. Um, so, you know, that's like on the white, we need shadows and soft grays in the white to shadow that. The reds in, the, in his robe, in the banners, in the marking on his chest plate needs uh, more contrast. The oranges need more contrast. Like, everything... That, that is your big challenge. We just need to go a lot farther in contrast. At the same time, you want to make sure you're having clean separation lines between things. So, like, uh, this, you know, part here isn't exactly a nice clean line. You want to make sure that's super clean all the way around and has one defined line separating it out. That kind of stuff. You want to be separating the individual elements, creating areas that, you know, everything should be going dark, light, dark, down. Just like you can see, look at the collar of my shirt here. I'm sorry, here, right? You can see how the skin gets shadowed and then there's this dark line here and then I have the normal collar and then it comes down in my little aprons there and there's a nice little dark line in between and then so on. Like everything is very separated, right? And that's what you want. Okay. Uh, Tomas, uh, Fire Giant, uh, went with non-metallic for the metals, did some OSL, different lava base and sword. Sure. So the non-metallics don't really sell. Um, they need to go farther. They need to be a lot brighter. We need to have a lot more number two and number one. Uh, and as to the lava effect uh, on him or the base, I think that actually sells. Um, with the fire sword, I would back out some of that Ferrari red. It's you're using your class. You're, you're sort of doing the classic fire contains Ferrari red thing. It doesn't. Fire does not contain Ferrari red. It contains uh, a whole red and a deep orange. So I would actually bring that orange way down and then I would make the tip of the sword actually go darker uh, red, uh, more of a whole red color. Um, but yeah, I mean, the effect of the glow on his face and stuff like that, I think that works fine. Um, I'm not sure what's meant to be the OSL. I don't know what's actually glowing. I don't see any real glow cast on anything. So I'm not sure what, your set, what, what that one is, where that's meant to be, but... The cracked lava effect and that kind of stuff on him, that sells. That I buy. The non-metallic on him, I don't. We need a lot more contrast. This is probably your best area right here because you do come up high enough here. 
Um, we need a little bit more of these edges picked out. Like all of these should kind of be a little bright or have a little bit of reflection to them. But down here on like the arms and stuff and on this area, that I'm not I'm not seeing it. And at the same time, if we if we really want to talk about lighting, then this fire sword would be absolutely coloring and, and showing the reflections of this non-metallic sword, right? So if your light source is a light source, then it has to cast light and it has to impact things. Okay. All right. So uh, next up, uh, Bradley, uh, basically looking for feedback on the Nurgle guy. Uh, horns on the shoulder, attempt at weathering the green slime on the backpack and how to get decent midtones. Sure, so I know you're just coming back to this uh, from your, your comments. Um, I mean, my, my basic challenge to you is I think this guy looks good. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. You've painted a nice model. So, you know, where you're ultimately going to want to go, uh, we need to have a nice, like, get a good front on picture, if that's what you want me to review. Like, this one's probably good enough. Um, but, like, make that the thing. Um, you know, as to, to highlighting, I mean, when you're using the sort of base coat wash layer technique, right, then it's important that you still create also shadows and what's missing here ultimately is is shadow colors um like having deeper shades um as far as the bones go i think they look nice you can go farther with that again i would i have a video on bone striations you might want to check that out or you can check out with the earlier just painting bone video i did you want to take the contrast uh, a little bit farther on those to really make them pop and stand out especially on somebody like this um i think the highlights look fine you know you're going to layer over washing space marines is always kind of a rough thing to do to be honest nurgle marines take it a little better since their their armor is pitted and stuff like that but like washes don't do well on big flat surfaces which is what a marine tends to be mostly made of uh but that being said it's the key of then going back in with uh, a softer shadow and actually uh you know creating those soft subtle shadows in there i think actually your metals are the thing i like the most on here like your your weathered copper and stuff, I think actually looks really nice. Um, good edges, good deep shadows, nice mid-tones like that. That's a good step. What I would focus on is bringing up the contrast in your in your main armor and really creating shadows and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, oh, as to the weathering, the only thing I didn't I didn't talk about, I guess, or the, the goop. The goop is fine. I, I have no issue with the goop. It looks like goop. It's fine. Um... And then, yeah, I think the weathering is, uh, you know, mostly fine. I don't really see any issue with the weathering. You can go farther. I mean, you can you can do a lot of pitting and stuff like that in those things, put browns and orange in there, have them leaking out. But for the most part, he seems the appropriate amount of weathered for a, a Nurgle Marine. I don't, I don't see any issue with that. There's a lot farther you could go. But if you're talking about, you know, given that you're just coming back to this, I think it's, it's right on. It's just fine. Okay, Nolan, uh, first large painting, and this is a big dragon. Uh, you know, saying he's trying to incorporate some more tonal variation. Um, good, we still need to go farther. So, for example, on his neck, like this is gold, what you've done here, right, in this area. Well, we need to do the individual scales and the volumetric shading. So, like, this area here should be in deeper shadow with just maybe the edges catching some light. Whereas this area here should be darn near silver because it's going to be right where the light hits. So it's about setting up the, the total volumes and then shrinking in and having the individual details picked out, right? Um, same with the individual scales and stuff like on his legs. We want to have some kind of deeper shadows in between those plates and then having the contrast pumped up on the edge of them, usually capturing them with texture or something like that, right? That's usually the way you want to go, okay? Uh, but overall, it's certainly I can see the progress from there. So I'd say keep it up and uh, look to see more. All right, next up, Abe, uh, first submission, uh, used oils on the skin, which is great. Glad to hear that. A lot of people using oils this month, which is exciting to see. I'm glad to see people experimenting with that. Um, not looking for any feedback on the NMM, just a bit of advice around the eyes or in general. Sure. Yeah, let's do that. So I think the skin is working. Go farther. When you're using oils, especially on a big bust, you can go farther. Just start putting colors in. My challenge to you, Abe, is to pick colors Colors, hues, real hues, magentas, blues, purples, yellows, and just put them into the skin. Make it work. You know, put it in there and then feather it out and, and see what you can do with that kind of a thing. Uh, now, as to the eyes themselves, um, the issue is around the, the, the eyeballs. The, the, let me say it this way. The iris looks good. 
Uh, it can use a little more, it could be used a little more detail around that area, but for the most part, it looks good. The eyeball itself needs some work. It needs more uh, red and pink at this scale. Like she has big anime eyes and like you need some reds and pinks and soft subtle tones in there. Um, her lips look very dry and cracked, which I'm not sure if that's what you're going for or not. The, the lines are good, but they look very, very dry. Um, and that's because we're fading into a bit of too much of a white gray. The real area for or opportunity we have here is around the eyes. Um, actually making sure we capture those soft, subtle tones that are, you know, more under the eye and the corner of the eye and around here. And that's where we need to work in a little bit more of those soft red, magenta, and purple tones. Uh, but for the most part, I like this. It's really nice. You did a good job of, you know, picking out the, the subtle muscles. And uh, I hope you enjoyed using the oils. They certainly make something like this a lot easier. And the freckles look great, by the way. You really did a fantastic job with that, Abe. So, well done. Okay, next up, Sam with his big old speeder. Thank you, buddy, goop, 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 goop. Uh, went through a few color schemes, set on the blue tones to give the, uh, you know, good contrast, which was the correct choice. The blue always looks great with the orange. Um, yeah, I think this guy looks fantastic, man. Um, the, the blue really stands out. It makes a very nice color in between the orange of it. I like the fade to black on the edge. This is a big project. Um, you know, like, are there ways we can improve? I mean, sure, we could, you know, the goblins could have some more contrast. They look a little flat. But this is ultimately a gaming piece. And I think compositionally, which is what you wanted feedback on, it looks really nice. Um, yeah, it's a good, good level of contrast all over the miniature. Uh, I think that's really nice. It's great. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that on the whole, my advice for you would be, Maybe a little more, um, a little more volumetric on the orange, where we could have a little bit deeper shadow of the orange, like down here on the side, taking in some soft sepia tones, like that side of his carapace is, should be, you know, kind of in shadow. So you can do that kind of stuff as like a final environmental highlighting, um, just to really sell the effect. But overall, it's really good. I dig it. Okay, uh, TJ, um, this is a commander he had built that he was originally going to enter in Golden Demon, and his question is mainly around that. So, TJ, my answer is, uh, this is good. You're going to need to go farther. Like, I need the individual elements and everything to be picked out. When, when you're getting to, to models like this, things where we've still got room to improve or stuff like the, the metals and this, and the, basically the non-red, non-blue parts of this armor need some more love and attention like these big bolts on the back of their thing i don't know what those are they look like screws like flathead screws but uh i've never understood exactly what those are doing in tau armor um but that kind of thing you know we need a little more like contrast and, and elements in there um edges need to be picked out a little more uh the and in our areas of heavy shadow which this is what i was talking about by the way earlier when i mentioned like the shadow on the battle tech mech that's fine. I don't mind you having this shadow. I'm not sure how much they would love it, to be honest, uh, as they generally... Yeah, it's tough to say. Judges are judges at Golden Demon, and, and it's hard to ever really get in their heads. But one thing I will say is, even in the deeper shadows like this, there should still be some color coming down here toward a light of some transition near the bottom. And the individual details should still have a little bit more picked out about them. At the same time, we need a lot more attention drawn to the face. So stuff like his little islands up here and this should be generally brighter. So that, like, you did these highlights really nicely. This area of red highlights, I really dig. I think this is fantastic. And you're following a sort of, you know, total volumetric highlighting, uh, which is, in general, actually the right thing to do, which is the light is more up here and this is darker. But we still want to make sure we have a little bit we want to bring this up a little bit, especially where they'd be very exposed to the light. Um, but this is a great piece. Uh, so I think, you know, there's a lot of, there's definitely a lot of, a lot of talent here and you're, you're on the right road. Um, bringing these white, these grays up a little more into the white spectrum, adding a little more detail to some of these pieces that are a little bit more in shadowed or a little less detailed, I think is what's going to help, uh, get you going on the right road. Okay, next up, Douglas uh, wants to know about the lightning and the wing effect. Yeah, sure. Uh, I see you too watch Dr. Faust. Uh, so my answer is, yeah, I think you nailed his take on the, the sort of wing pattern well. You want to vary the circles a little more uh, in, you know, like they're still very regular. You want those to be a little more varied. You're, you let your brain get into its regular pattern, so that's kind of challenging. 
Um, now, as to the lightning, no, the lightning doesn't work because lightning isn't yellow. Um, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of lightning in my life and none of it has been yellow, right? Um, the With an effect like this, you want to sell it based on a physical thing. So the if, you're, if you want lightning out of the mouth, uh, maybe I should do a video on this sometime. I, I do this quite often. You can make lightning out of paper clips that you sort of glue and fasten together and bend into place with a pair of pliers. Um, and you could have him striking down with that. And lightning should generally be like white blue, um, unless there's an unusual situation like you've got volcano or volcanic lightning, in which case it's usually pink. Um, but the uh, but in general, yeah, like this is the part that doesn't sell. The wings, I think, look look good. It's a, it's a nice take on it. Um, you could use for a few more small dots, by the way. Like, in between here, one of the last things you can do is in this dark space, come in and just dot, literally, like, stipple a fairly bright white-ish, white-bluish color, right? Because that'll help complete it, uh, could sort of complete the illusion. But, uh, yeah, overall, cool stuff, man. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, Alberto, basically looking for uh, contrast. Uh, sure, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we definitely need... Uh, more contrast on the figure like and we need the elements separated more so it's something I said before a clean paint job is one where every element feels completely separated if you go look at stuff that like you know your your favorite high-end painters are doing don't just look see and when you see see that the individual elements always have dark around them separating them like go look at Sergio Calvo's work it's a great example of that he always there's no just like a mid-tone into a mid-tone that doesn't happen it's light into dark with a light edge and then a dark line and then light and then into you know and so on right and that's how you get that individual separation now where should there be more contrast mostly everywhere um so like the leather for example is just as bright here as it is here okay uh the uh, red is just as bright here as it is here. The white is just as bright here as it is down here, right? That's the kind of places we need to be upping that contrast and having, and then the separation needs to be like nice dark elements in between them. Leather straps like this are actually nice because you can have this very clean edged highlight that's just sort of stippled and stuff like that to separate the individual leather elements where they're worn and it looks fantastic. So ultimately that's going to be my advice for you there. Okay, uh, Damien, uh, so he says, uh, basically he repainted Queek and he's looking for some feedback. So this is the original Queek, if I understand correctly, because this is, he said the first three pictures. And then this is the new Queek. Yeah, so in looking at this, um, I think a lot of what I said about, I think our, our main challenge here is we need, like, I'm not a general big fan of sort of those kinds of colored metallics. I'll be honest, I don't think they ever really look right. Um, because they always just reflect strangely and they have big pigment. They just tend to look glittery. But where we really have the opportunity, again, is in much as I said before, the separation of elements, right? Um, the individual areas are not clean enough and separated enough. Like here, you can see this runoff here. You can see this runoff here and so on and so forth, right? What we need is these pieces coming to a nice you know, bright area into a dark within a light and getting that really clean and those areas up against each other, that kind of paint control and contrast is your main area you want to focus on. As far as composition, we do have too many colors going on here. I mean, we've got a riot of color. We've got like blues. We've got blue, green, red, orange, and yellow in this piece. That's too many colors, right? Now, some of those are desaturated, but some of them are not. And in general, like blue, red, and green is a really tough combination to sell. Um, and it's, you know, sort of your primary compositional element here. So, um, you know, something like keeping that, keeping your color palette a little more limited is probably a good way to go. Uh, but there you go. I hope that advice helps. Uh, okay, next up. Uh, Carl's, sure, BC. So BC, uh, so, you know, looking at some non-metallic, uh, yeah, sure. So, I mean, non-metallic was the main area I was looking for feedback on. So let's talk about non-metallic. Um, yeah, the gold here, you, you're you running the right level of contrast, but we don't have the right tones. So here's a good example of, like, I can see it. In black and white, I mostly have the nice dark, the nice lights. That's all fine. I have no issue with that. 
The issue we have is that we don't have enough actual gold tone in here. We need more ochre. Um, you don't have enough of your mid. Like, and so part of this is actually saturation. It's a part I don't often talk about with non-metallic, but it's very important in that it has to feel like the color that it is. So gold can get too yellow really easily, but it's usually a matter of a very careful balance. And that ochre tone is really, really important. So um, that's, I think, you know, some glazing of those colors into it, yellows, ochres, stuff like that, I think is actually what's going to what's gonna keep you uh, in the right space. So hope that helps. It's definitely got the right contrast level, so you're going the right direction. Um, just be careful with stuff like the eagle, like just putting those little dots on the edge, that's not going to work. Like we don't have any mid-tone. We go like five, four, one, <laughs> right? Too much of a jump. Okay, the shoulder pad is the part that really works for me the best. Okay, <clears throat> next up, uh, James, big old Magnus the Red. Yeah, man, this is a great piece. Uh, this guy looks absolutely wonderful, very clean, uh, good separation of elements. The feather hashing looks really nice. The non-metallic looks really good. I think probably the only thing that where I think we've got a chance to add a little more to him, if that's what you're looking for, is in the musculature. Um, a little more actual, like, pushing of the individual striations and stuff in the muscle. He has those, like, really built pecs that have the individual muscles so much showing through. So you can kind of pick those out very subtly. And I think that can really help kind of sell overall the, the effect. But uh, it's a great uh, Magnus the Red. He looks absolutely gorgeous. So uh, well done. Okay, next up, Steven, uh, deliberate practice on blending and glazing. Uh, finish this troll. Uh, okay, so did a lot more. I had to go at spotting texture to give a modeled skin texture. Do I think it plays? Well, let's take a look. <clears throat> uh, let's see. This is a great way to achieve blending, this kind of modeled texture. And uh, my answer is yes, it would play if he was matte. Uh, what's screwing you up here is actually just the fact that he's shiny because your, your shade color, whatever you're using for your glazes, are shiny. If you ultra matte this guy out, he's going to look fantastic. Um, does the skin texture sell to me? Yeah, man, it really does. It really does. Especially around here, this belly area where you've got this different stuff in. I dig it. I think it looks fantastic. I think it looks wonderful. The problem is we have too much shiny stuff going on. Got to, got to, got to, got to, got to get that ultra matte. Uh, because when your shadows are reflecting white light, it makes the model look bad. Okay, that's what's happening here. Your things that are supposed to be shadow, like look at this. See this reflection? That's bad. Shadows don't reflect light. The second that happens, you snap the whole illusion. That's why you generally want to go ultramat. So my answer is yes. Your texture is selling. Give them an ultramat. As far as contrast goes and the other elements... The club, the stuff on his back, we need to keep pushing those. I know that wasn't the focus, the piece, that's fine. I'm not going to really bust your chops on that. The skin texturing really sells. Go farther. Play around a little more. Stipple in some other colors. Bring in some like red stippling, some blue stippling into places. But that is a great cheat for blending that actually makes the piece look wonderful and probably better than if it was just this razor smooth thing all over him. So I think yeah, that's an absolute success. Okay. Patrick, uh, Armorcast Stampa, uh, general feedback on the weathering. Sure. Um, I don't know that he has much in the way of weathering. It's, that's, that's my answer. I don't see much in the way of weathering. I guess you mean on the shoulder pads? Like, I guess the slight stuff around here, this picture's a little fuzzy, so it's hard for me to kind of tell. Uh, some very slight like sponge i guess that's probably sponge stippling there yeah a little bit there my answer is it's so light i can barely tell like i if you if we're going to do that kind of weathering we need to it needs to be more in places that i would expect so let's take a look at this the the edge here looks nice okay i'm seeing that now i think that's something you put on there and not like a light reflection so if you did that looks good the edges like that getting worn, that I like. So you're right on there. And maybe you're going for like a really light touch weathering or something. That could be. I don't know. Um, but like this guy's really clean uh, for an orc. And you want to make sure your weathering is consistent. So this guy looks like some weird variant Dalek. 
Um, but the, you know, the individual bolts, every bolt on him is shiny silver. So this guy has no rusty bolts, nowhere where water's gotten trapped, nowhere where there's streaking or grime or things that, you know, like I, I saw the one spot in the back, but like I'm looking at the front of him. The front of him is what's assumingly getting shot the most, right? And I'm not seeing anything as far as like bullet holes, scratches, paint chips, streaks, that kind of stuff. So like those kinds of things are what I would expect to see here. The little bit of sponge weathering, I think on those kinds of elements where you're scuffing the edges and having those, yeah, fine. You're That's great stuff. I think you're doing a good job there. But like the copper all looks brand new. The metal all looks brand new. Like this guy rolled off the factory for everything except his shoulder pads and some of his guns. So I think we need to probably step that up a little bit and show a little bit more of the organic style weathering. Okay. All right, next up, uh, Shane. Uh, so this is his, uh, he said it's a very ambitious project and it's these nice dragons. I think this is a beautiful little diorama you did with, with this here. My, I think this looks really cool. I think this is neat. I don't know if they're meant to be fighting or romantically engaged. Honestly, it kind of, Looks like maybe it's the latter, like they're playing, um, but which is cool. Um, I think that's a better take on the thing. But honestly, the I mean, my biggest piece of feedback for you here, Shane, is more contrast. I mean, it's really simple: more contrast, more texture. Um, like they're they're generally universally colored. There's a little bit of shading in between their scales, but like the top of his wings is the same color as the bottom of his wings. They're generally uniformly colored throughout. Um, so, you know, like catching more shadows under their bodies, more texturing on the edges of the scales, all that kind of stuff to entry increase both the, the, the value contrast as well as the, um, texture contrast, I think is where I would tell you to go. Okay. Next up, uh, Jacob, uh, so, uh, Taking pictures of minis. Well, it's really hard, but I mean, this is the first problem. First of all, I got compressed, so don't let this happen. Like, I think this is a thing you can do in settings when you upload. Like, this is something on your personal Facebook, I think, um, because it got all compressed, and now I can't really see. Like, that's a little too small for me to really review the detail. Um, also, just as a side note, avoid rainbow cords like that. They don't they do not do anything. It, it's not helping you. Um, so, like, I can actually see it bigger if I review it like this. Uh... Now, as to how to get the viewer's eyes to wander, you that's creating light and dark. Like, that is what contrast does. If his leg, if his belt, if his thing, if there's constant movement between light and dark, light and dark, it keeps the eye moving around the mini, right? Now, as to the true metallics, it feels like we've got a couple that are, um, that are kind of having some very hard, again, I can't super tell, but having some very hard, like that looks to go from silver to very dark. So you want to focus on some softer glazing to get that, um to get that transition a little more smooth it can be tough with metals but glazing on the inks and things like that is the way to smooth it out popping up all your highlights on things like the reds the knee the leather adding contrast through texture on the edge of the leather that kind of stuff is what you want to do okay ace uh trying to get some depth in colors and just wanting to know if i'm on the right path and what it can be doing better sure so um yeah i mean it's good it's a clean uh, you know, big, what is this guy's name? Marius Calgar or something like that. Maybe that's his name. That sounds right. Um, it's good. Where we have opportunities is in stuff like the, you know, the bolt gun is all very similarly colored over here. Like there's nothing, there's not a lot of transition there. The leather again could be taken that higher, a little more contrast on the edges, a little more hashing and texture, stuff like that, pushing that up. The armor itself could use a little bit more distinction. So, uh, again, you don't have to go up into full non-metallic shiny mode, but a little bit more brightness and a little bit more soft shadows, especially in places like here, up under here, uh, the under part of the arm, the bottoms of the legs. Like, it's just about, you know, glazing and controlling those shadows. Are you on the right path? Yes, 100%. Uh, I can definitely see the improvement. You're moving along. It's just a question of continuing to, to push and evolve that contrast level. Okay, next up, uh, Tom. Uh, good number of hours on his Belisarius call and loathsome fatigue on the highlight placement of their southern uh, ways to make this guy pop. Yeah, so I, I took a look at this guy, and the first thing I noticed is that the red is very flat. And in real life, you're probably going to tell me it's a little bit more, and that's generally true. Reds don't capture perfectly on camera. But um, more shadows, I mean, like, it, 
I, I even in real life, I could say that like if I'm giving you 20% extra credit, this still needs to go farther. Um, more contrast on that. Now, on the True Metallic Metals, it's the same exact story. I mean, it's just more contrast. You can keep in True Metallic Metals. You don't have to paint an M NMM, but we need to learn the lessons of that. So, like, having more deeper shadows here on this back part is an easy way to say. Here on this piece right here, bringing down deeper shadows into the edge, bringing this up into a higher silver along a line here, and so on and so forth down the various pieces, right? Um, if you go watch, like, maybe 165 or something, Hobby Cheating, where I talk about where you watch me do the back of the Skaven armor in a, in a like, revisiting uh, true metallic metals in a non-metallic style, whatever that was, something like that. Um, that one will, uh, well, I paint a, a shape of armor that's very, very similar, and you'll see how I create the contrast on that, and that will lead you down the right direction. So it's just a matter of getting those inks, those deeper tones, even using normal paints, and glazing in those matte shadows and taking control of the light on the true metallic metal, and that will that will help the figure pop. Okay, next up, uh, Dave, uh, 120 millimeter miniature uh, uh, Oxalotl Dragon from the Cobra Mode Patreon. Neat. Um, yeah, this guy's cool. He's real big. Uh, yeah, I think this guy's a really neat looking weird mini. I dig it. Uh, so my, my basic answer is I really like your color scheme. Um, where we need to push it up is again in things like the, the contrast. It's the same story again like the individual scales on his face need to be picked out more more individualized um the shadows and stuff here deep down and under his horns um the gold especially really stands out as being extremely flat so having more variation more placed shadow on that stuff and then more picked out highlights through the application of silver and through the application of inks those are the things that i really notice um water effect looks super cool i, I dig that i don't know if that came with him or if you did that but it's really good um, so I dig all that. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I, like I said, I love your all, overall color scheme. You do a nice job of drawing attention to the face with the color and composition choice. I think that's very strong. We just need to get the rest of the, uh, the contrast in there. So there you go. Hope that helps. Okay. So let's keep going. Uh, next up we have, uh, Kartik who says, um, he's been trying to incorporate more variants in color. Uh, with blending and edge highlighting. Uh, sure. So uh, that first picture was a little small, but this one actually gives us a nice view. So my answer is to continue pushing it. I can see where you're pushing some of your highlights, and I think that looks good, like along the leg line. Um, we need to smooth out some of those blends a little bit, but I can see where you're pushing toward. We need to also, at the same time, deepen the shadows. Um, so bringing in some darker you know, green colors, maybe incorporating a little bit of red into the green is a good way to go uh, to really bring that down. Uh, and make sure that that's, uh, you know, you really get those, that, that contrasted shadows that you want. Um, that's the part that jumps out at me the most. Uh, so uh, I would just say continue pushing that contrast of value. And uh, you can think about how you can incorporate uh, contrast of hue through the use of those shade colors as well. But on the whole, yeah, good progress. I think there's also a lot of opportunity with the metals. Those are the part that seem the most flat. So pushing those up with some more up and down, some more darker shadows and some more higher highlights into more silver metals. Okay, next up, uh, Ken, just looking for feedback. Uh, sure. Um, yeah, so in general, uh, I think what I see is we probably need to get some of the paints a little thinner. Um, and then we also need to push our contrast up. So like right now we have very similar colors um, kind of throughout. And what you wanna really work on here, Ken, is paint control. Uh, because things like I noticed the, the red, your line isn't very straight and there's a lot of like, so I have a video on painting sharp thin lines. Go check that out. Um, when it comes to the blue, we have very hard segmentations between the two colors. If you look at my video on exploring colors in blue, I walk you through how you can better highlight and shadow blue. And again, that we need to up our contrast here, both on the blue, probably thin out the paint and smooth it down a little bit because it looks like in some places we're still a little thick. Um, and then same with things like this up here on the staff. So yeah, just pushing up the contrast. It's certainly like, it depends on what you know level you're going for. If you're going for tabletop quality, it's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it at all. Um, but if you're looking to push farther, then yeah, deepening the shadows and stuff like that and pushing out more naturalistic highlights and contrast of value is where you're going to want to go. Uh, and then we'll push into more tonal variation 
uh, later or contrast of, of hue, okay? All right, so next up, uh, Chris, first submission, uh, looking to increase his speed painting value in skin tone. Uh, sure. So I think then if we're going to talk about speed painting, what we want to talk about then is, you know, using things like wet blending and, uh, you know, washes and glazes and quick things like that to just get in there and to get that those different tones there. I, I mean, I think for four hours, the perfectly acceptable job. There's nothing at all wrong with it. Um, if I was going to uh, talk about some other stuff that I would focus on if I was you, um, it'd be things like working in a little more color, especially when you're dealing with very gray neutral skin, working in like a deep purple or something like that into the lower tones to get those, um, to get more interesting colors in there. Whether And that can be a way to tie the two beasts together. Like purple could be your shadow color for the skin, and it could also, or sorry, for the gray skin, and it could also be the shadow color for the more sort of pinky skin as well, right? That kind of thing. Um, and you can do that through as you're, you know, blending on there initially or sketching in there um, with your wet blends. And you can also do it uh, through, um, you know, just some glazes. And it looks like there's a nice little bit of it here on the side. I like that. Um, we just need to carry that consistently kind of throughout the rest of the mini. Okay, next up, Raphael. Um, so, uh, first submission, uh, and uh, says he's been painting for around six months. Sure. So I think, again, you know, as I see with most people, folks who are starting out, my biggest push for you is going to be we need to focus on contrast and improving and understanding value contrast and lights and shadows. So, you know, I have lots of videos on this, uh, more forthcoming. Uh, I always talk about this, but things like the gold especially is, is um, quite flat. And so you can go watch, you know, the many videos I have on how to shade and highlight true metallic uh, gold. Um, you know, you have some shades in there that look like it's been washed and then layered over. That's perfectly fine. Um, but we can take it higher with uh, highlights and things like that as well. At the same time, things like the blue, you have very hard transitions in your blue here. Um, again, I would go recommend that Exploring Colors Blue video because um, that'll show you how to, to, you know, highlight and shadow blue in a more naturalistic way. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, keep pushing at it. Uh, one final note I'll make is... When you're doing stuff like, don't do stuff like this. <laughs> these are just rocks. You didn't paint these. Don't put unpainted things onto a miniature base. They stand out like a sore thumb. Like I could look at that, glance at that and go, nope, those are just out of scale stones because they don't look painted. Um, when everything else is painted, everything has to be painted. Also, if you're gonna keep these little annoying foot pieces that they have, um, you wanna make sure that that's worked in. Like put some putty, some, some glue, some grit some something around this so it feels like it's part of whatever it's on when you glue down the rocks you want to prime with the rocks on there you want that to all be part of it and you want to paint those those rocks don't have unpainted elements on your base so uh there you go hope that helps out okay next up james recent progress was aggressive with the battle damage and weathering it feels like it's missing something and what could we do to take it to the next level so Obviously, we're in our Adeptus Titanicus scale here. And uh, let me just say, I, I really like the use of the pigment on the bottom. I think that actually feels real nice. That's that's gathered very organically. Uh, so I dig that. The battle damage feels quite naturalistic. I really like it for the size of this thing. Uh, I think that's good. Our rust up here might be a bit overdone, given the size, like in the transition. It's very orange and then to nothing. A little more brown tones mixed into the metals would probably be beneficial um, as I'm scrolling around this thing, just because we have a lot of like sudden jumps from like steel to orange. And like there should be some brown or sepia in the middle there somewhere. Okay. Uh, all right. So um, that's probably my major thought there. Now, as far as everything else goes, you know, the, the damage and scratches itself, no, those all sell for me. I like those. Um, yeah. No, I think that looks good. I think this is a great-looking AT model. Uh, so, yeah, that's the only part that jumps out at me, uh, is that, that some of that rust is a little too orange and not enough brown, and the size of the sort of pigment and, and the texture you put on him is going to feel a little out of scale because, again, this, you know, Adeptus Titanicus is getting closer to that same battle tech problem we talked about earlier where it's so tiny and so out of scale that it gets really difficult to actually um, properly, like, shade and highlight. But on the whole, I, I think this is a really good job. I think it looks great. 
Okay, next up, uh, Yon, uh, first time, first submission and first time with oils. Um, great. Uh, so, um, my advice is, uh, on the whole, it looks like you're doing a good job with the oils. Looks like you're smoothing them out well and following the, the general techniques. Um, one thing you want to do when you paint with oils is often you've got to come in and do round two. You can't do it all <coughs> in one round because your high highlights and your low shadows will all get eaten up into the mid-tone, right? So you've got to let everything dry and then come back in, and that's when you want to pop that stuff up. Love the pigment on the feet. That looks very naturalistic, like the sand looks good there. Um, but things like the non-metallic on, especially the steel is where it's not selling because we get neither dark enough nor light enough. So we need to push that in both directions there. And as well, again, when you're playing with oils on skin, let's go nuts. Get nuts. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts, okay? Like, get me more red tones, more purple tones, and push those highlights a little higher. Uh, this is good. Like, you're definitely in a right place. We can just go farther. Um, but I love how naturalistic the skin looks. I think you're, you're doing a great job. We just need a little bit more of those magenta, crimson, purple tones in there, and then probably maybe even a little bit of the uh, a sort of sepia mixed in as well uh, to show some tanning or something like that. This dude is out in the sun a little bit, so you could use some of that to kind of filter some colors, uh, as well as pushing the highlights a little bit more. But on the whole, this is a great job. And for, you know, first time attempting oils, I think you did an absolutely wonderful job. So yeah, the key is that second pass. Okay, next up, Chris. Uh, the green robe to make it stand out a bit more. Um, sure. So, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't know that you need to in a big way, but the answer is more value contrast. I mean, it just, your the flowers look really nice. We just need to be pushing the areas of value contrast up higher. One way you could do that was through like the stippling, like we saw earlier with the troll, using that sort of stippling texture. Using a very fine stippling texture on something like this can feel appropriate because it feels like that kind of woven cloth. Um, and that will help you transition through it. It'll also, the little, lots of little dots of light um, will both make it feel more naturalistic and draw the eye to it because then you've got both contrast of texture and contrast of value. And again, that's more interesting to your eye. So the more information you're sending, the more it draws the eye in, the more interesting it is. Uh, so that's probably my recommendation. And that would allow you to push highlights a little farther, which is, I think, ultimately what you need to do. Uh, but great stuff overall. Okay. Next up, uh, Tom. Uh, here is uh, Grolock, the, uh, his kitbashed Necromoney bounty hunter. Yeah, the dude looks cool. Uh, nice kitbash there of the Nurgle and Corn models together for the corpse grinders. Uh, you know, truly a gross dude down there. Those axes from the Corpse Grinder cult are like the bit that keeps on giving. They're fantastic. Uh, you know, one thing I would say is I, I know you want, he clearly should be very dark and gritty and Blanchitsu, which I don't have a problem with. You may still want to push a little bit of contrast in there um, in some places. He overall feels very, very dim and like a little bit more light, especially around the face. A little bit of a few reflections catching on the edge of the gold that's on his big corn helmet the skulls having a few more lighter tones in them. That kind of stuff just could make this area stand out a little bit more and bring it into focus. The axes themselves might need a little more detail as well. Like this, this if he's a corpse grinder dude and cutting through people with those axes, assumingly the enamel paint on the side would be scratched and hatched. And you could have little scratches of color and visual confusion coming in there. And that would both make it feel more gritty and necromundity, uh, but also add to the visual interest. So... There you go. Hope that helps, but cool piece. Okay, next up, Sang, uh, bringing us uh, his latest work with this Eldar Farseer. Uh, and yeah, overall, this guy looks really nice. The only part of it that I'm, I'm seeing that I think you, you want to focus on is just smoothing out those blends on stuff like the black, where the gray line still looks a little too harsh. Uh, and then working in with the golds, uh, and having a little bit more of a shadow tone coming into them. So these it's tough when they're very small like this. But again, like each one of these little bracers, you did it well on this arm, but this arm, I don't see the separation lines quite as clean. Um, stuff up here, like the gold on the sword, we need to have a nice sharp line around that. And, you know, probably some silver to highlight some pieces there. And then smoothing out, like we're working in purple and black, two colors that don't, that are very like, uh hard to do transitions on without it showing and it shows here right so we need to work on glazes and stuff to kind of smooth that out but uh overall this guy looks real cool so i dig him i think he looks fantastic i like the the flat black with the edge highlights and the main armor the yellow coming down off his 
whatever this is, whatever this tabard thing is around their their neck that Eldar wear. Um, you know, that all looks fantastic. And I, I like uh, I like the the face up here being blue to balance out the sword along with the gem and down here. That's actually really, really great color balance. So you did a wonderful job there of keep giving me a nice color triangle on the blue. So great compositional choice, Sang. Okay, next up, Bartaz. Uh, so uh, doing a big crackly uh, uh, Beast of Chaos endless spell here. Yeah, I mean, for what it's, it's an endless spell, you know? And I think for the most part, uh, he said, you know, uh, lava, fire, marble, OSL, um, yeah, the fire sells to me. You avoided most of the Ferrari red. You've got a lot of nice, rich orange, only a little bit of white. I'm a buyer. I like it. Uh, I think the, the under effect inside him looks really good. The sort of cracked effect on his skin sells to me. Um, yeah. I mean, I think on the whole, I, I dig the heck out of this thing. You know, if there were going to be any things you'd do, I'd push a couple of the areas into a little more black where it's really, you know, where it's really meant to be charred. Uh, so, you know, just to draw some, some perhaps even higher contrast, but for the most part, it's fine. The OSL down on the rocks, minimal, perfect, cast in just the right yellow, orange hue. I'm a buyer on that. There should be a little more shadow down on this side. You can't strike a match without creating a shadow. So if this is lit, then this should be shadowed more. Little minor touches like that. But on the whole, I think this looks absolutely great, man. It's a super cool endless spell. It should be, I, I think you did a wonderful job with it. All right, next up, Christian, uh, with uh, some sweet armager Helbrins for me here. Uh, what could he change that could catch the attention of a judge at a competition? Yeah, so I think overall this is a really nice piece. Um, you know, I was looking at this one beforehand, and I think it's uh, it's really solid. I like your colors. I like the modulation. The edges are really sharp. The damage is minimal but effective. Uh, the little, the, you know, the freehand and the use of these kinds of iconographies are good. I think what we need to probably focus on is picking out some of the details, especially on the metal frame, a little more. So let me see if I can get you exactly what I mean. Um, like here, all of this is just the same metal, right? There's no paint, there's no color, there's no nothing. And like you've got some good variation in weathering, but just having like some copper things mixed in. Is this tube really the same metal as this? Like this should be different, these should be different. It's those little things that are gonna help you stand out. Like if it was me, um, this vent on the on the on the the uh, gun up here should be copper. Um, these should be copper. Um, this tube and this tube and all the tubes should be you know some kind of color like rubber tubes. Like make them uh, a deep deep desaturated red or a gray tone or a rubber tone or something like that. Same. Pick out a few tubes in the interior on the sides of his his body and actually get those a painted color. Um, just having those variations so it doesn't feel like the skeleton is one giant thing, uh, but actually has pieces and parts can really help. Like when you pop open your engine on your car, most of it is like pretty samey, right? Especially older cars. And they look there because they're mostly metallic and it's a lot of just engine parts and engine grease and stuff like that. But you'll see those elements, those little individual things that are a different color or there's a plastic cap or there's, you know, couple wires or a tube running somewhere you know and those things are different colored and stand apart from the big steel engine and that's the kind of thing that can help it really stand out so overall cool stuff these are such fun guys to paint i, lo I love painting these little armatures they're really fun okay uh duarte first bust in time submitting uh basically looking for a color composition and is the old iron helmet selling or is it made of stone if you're asking the question you know what the answer is right if you thought in your head, always listen to yourself. I can't say this enough during these reviews. If in your head, you're like, that doesn't look right, it's not selling, don't try to trick yourself into thinking it does. So yes, the crest is too much, but it doesn't have to be. If the glowing eyes had been the same orange, red, or yellow, or in that tone, it would sell fine, because then all of a sudden we'd balance out, right? The problem with it is that you've got this huge bright spot that I can't look away from. Like, your eyes just move to that instantly because it's this high luminosity, and it just stops. Like, the fact that you asked about both these things tells me you noticed both of these things. Listen to yourself. You already know the answers I'm going to give you, right? So, um, yes, the, the, the steel just looks like stone. The few parts that work, by the way, are the edge of this thing. 
So the very edge of this actually works as steel because you go all the way to black and you come up all the way to white and it's in a really nice ordered location exactly as I'd expect. Whereas the helmet here on, a, on this kind of a shape, it wouldn't be highlighted like this. It's a sphere. So it would have, you know, it would have a spherical highlight on non-metallic metal where there'd be a light spot and then it would fall into shadow and around with like a small kickback light. This is a cylinder, so it would have a cylinder, you know, volumetric highlight and so on and so forth. Like helmets like this, you got to break it down into the individual pieces. And then as well, it doesn't go high enough. It doesn't go low enough in most places. So yes, that's where you need to push. Also think about adding in colors. If it's truly non-metallic and it's reflective and it's shiny, then it's going to pick up things like that orange should be reflected in there. So you should have a warm reflection, uh, you know, things of that nature, right? Like this layer of... Um, this layer of scales should be picking up some of the red of this cloth, that kind of thing, right? Always be thinking about if you're painting light reflections, then you're painting light reflections and those things should show the color, okay? All right. All right, let's keep going. Next up, we've got Seth um, bringing us an orc knob. Uh, Focus was getting good results with the orc flesh, horns, and bone. Um, sure. So I think what we need to do is sort of talk about, you know, with this scale, these very busy models, right? Um, one thing, again, we probably have a bit too much in the way of colors going on, uh, just because when you, you want to be careful when you're combining like pink with red, I have no issue with, you know, throwing some pink on the orcs, but it's a problem then when it gets together. Orcs have a challenge because orcs always have green or often have green, I should say. And so... <clears throat> We've got green, we've got pink, we've got red, we've got purple, we've got yellow, right? And two different kinds of many of those. So that's a challenge here. Like, we need to cut our palette down some back into, like, a space that we can handle. Now, on the bone, we definitely need to smooth that out, get a little more contrast in there. Like, we don't have any, like, this is a much too much, or, or sorry, uh, far too little uh, value contrast. Uh, same with like when you've got a bright yellow tube like this, we have to find a way to shade that down and, and bring it up. Like if you're going to start adding contrast, everything kind of has to be like that. And then on the skin, you, um, I would go watch the painting orc skin video that I did. Um, because there's just, we need to work other tones in there. Like one, it's not going far enough in value of contrast, but there also isn't enough contrast of hue as well. Um, and so, you know, having like some red, some pink in the lips, it's very desaturated around the elbows, around the knuckles, that kind of stuff. But if you watch that uh, video, uh, you'll see kind of how I tackle that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah. But overall, very cool orc knob. Hope that advice helps. Okay, next up. Uh, Pauly, uh, basically looking for the following questions. Not so happy with the cloth. Any tips? Is it clean enough? Are each part distinct enough? Yeah, so looking at the, we can actually look at the black and white, and I think this really fills it out. All the rest of this is really nice. I do think the cloth is ultimately too boring. Now, we've got to be careful with this with highlights because I like the directional lighting. I think it really works. I think the skulls are picked out well and have good light. I think this guy's creepy as all get out. I like it. Where I think we have the opportunity is for on the edges of the cloth to show worn texture catching. That will help distinguish some of these elements. And, uh, you know, like I can see maybe a little bit of it, but we need to push that farther. Really go into some of like your glacier blue or some, you know, a color like that and pick out some of those light blue edges as though there's a softer blue light on that side, sort of the ambient environmental cold lighting. And I think that'll really help because this light from the side feels very sort of warm and strong, right? And so I think that that'll be a good way to go to kind of push him and bring that, that out, all right? Um, is it clean enough? I think the answer is yes. Most of the parts seem quite well separated. There's a few areas that feel like they could use a little bit more attention, but um, probably like uh, some of the individual little bottles or whatever these magenta things are could be picked out a little better. Some of the edges of the leather belts could have a, be a little brighter to just kind of distinguish the elements a little more. But for the most part, I think you're definitely in the right place there and, and nothing else really jumps out at me. Um, but I hope that, uh, I hope that helps. Okay, next up, Scott, uh, with his latest bust, um, tried to push himself, uh, and, uh, you know, he said he was reluctant to make the shadows too dark because he didn't want to do an extreme dual light effect. But the answer is, looking at it, yes, we definitely need to go farther. So, 
I mean, you, you don't need to go full Rembrandt, but I love the lighting effect on the hair on the side of the face. I think that all sells. Um, we probably need to smooth some of that out a little bit. Some of the blends are still a little too harsh on the skin. Um, but the but this area, especially like uh, if the light is this bright, that it's creating this kind of a highlight and this kind of a shine and sheen, and that's like, you know, like here, like you've told me this is quite a bright light. If I put a flashlight to my face right here, this side of my nose is going to be, and my eye is going to be in deep shadow, right? So, I mean, you don't have to go full hard Rembrandt lighting, but I think you want to make sure you're going, you know, at least in that direction. So the, the infusion of more soft blue tones and soft shadows to that side of the face, which you'll see in a lot of uh, sort of old master type paintings, uh, is really what I think would help elevate you up and, and take that up to the next level. But I like the colors. I like the various texture. Everything looks nice. Good desaturation of tones. Uh, good texture on the various cloth pieces. All that works for me. So good stuff. Okay, next up, Gavin. Uh, first submission, been painting for around three months. Looking for tabletop standard. Um, yeah, I mean, I think if tabletop standard's your goal, I think you're getting there. Now, as to, you know, what can we do to take it up? Um, you know, the orc skin is probably, you probably are approaching the right level of contrast. You actually are going quite bright here, but we need to bring the pieces together. Your muscles have like, this goes, your, your blends need to be smoother in these individual muscle separations. Like the problem is we're all in one, two, three and not enough four five. Like this is a very bright. And then we go immediately into a dark line. Like these look like armor panels, not muscles. You know, I, I'm not the most muscular guy, but no part of my muscle has a shadow that deep running down it, right? So it's got to be a soft transition into it, okay? And again, the integration of additional hues and things like that, if you want to go above tabletop, that's that's where you're going to be. I mean, at tabletop, you're, you're there. Now, as to working in additional elements, sure, popping things like this up higher um, with more highlights getting more different tones into the, the the face like orcs often have you'll see them, people integrate pink into the nose the eyebrows the lips stuff like that to just kind of still create that fleshy blood feeling right and then smoothing out the blends into the your your deepest shadows is what i would do so hope that helps gavin all right next up abel uh the old marauder giant uh working with some oils um darker tones in the skins and shadows are hard to pick out uh so, yeah, let's let's take a look. I do think you could keep pushing this down farther. I understand you said it's more there in real life, but, you know, farther. <laughs> I'll give you, again, I'll give you like a 20% credit. It should still be more, more different tones, especially given how big this guy is and how much he would cast shadows. So just having a lot of different tones, again, like, you know, deep magentas, purples, and things like that in the skin would really be helpful. Um, now, as to the gold and the the um the silver um i mean i think that they're mostly fine it's hard for me to tell a bit because i think of the way you like punched this guy out from his background or whatever um but i think the silver sells better than the gold i agree i think the what's missing on the gold is a little bit more of the low tones a little bit more of the deeper shadows especially amongst the recesses of the the um the recesses of the the various sort of items there like the, the little what do you call it embellishment embossment pattern whatever that kind of thing but overall i think this guy's good i think if i was going to pick one thing it would be yes keep pushing it on the skin more colors more contrast of value and hue okay next up uh jamie appreciate feedback and comments on the osl yeah i mean that's obviously our main main focus here and my feedback is quite simple it's too strong uh and it goes weak too fast so osl you know a light source isn't just hitting that thing one it's creating shadows so everything like i've said previously we need deeper shadows on the opposite side of the light like if this light is that strong then it should be creating equally deep shadows okay like right now i have a very bright light above me i have deep shadows under my eyes right the green up here is too bright the green up here is too bright compared to the green down here. If our light source is down where you've kind of... I, I don't know if I'd put this green thing on the base. Like, is this meant to be the light source? I would just kind of like... I've, I've done this trick before, and I just use it as though the plinth itself is reflecting some of it as well. Um, but in any way, this should be the brightest, and then progressively it gets dimmer. 
because the farther from your light source you get, the less powerful the light becomes, right? And then we need to smooth it out more and, and weaken that transition into the normal flesh tone. So right now our transitions are like extremely hard and like this sternocleidomastoid here is catching no green. What angle is that happening at where neither up here nor here is catching any light, but this part of his ear is, right? Like that doesn't work for me. So it's got to be infused into everything and have this soft transition into that, that color. So we can't just like have this super bright green and then have it die. It, this should be weaker than down here and it should be a soft transition into the non-lit area. Okay. So hope that helps, Jamie. But cool experiment overall. This is a great bust from uh, from Banshee that's perfect for this kind of experimentation. All right, next up, Sean uh, with an interesting try at their, using the Zorn color palette. Uh, so looking for feedbacks on kind of the limited color palette as well as the copper non-metallic metal. Um, I think on the limited color palette, you really nailed it. You still created a lot of interest. Things like the additions of the texture and stuff to the uh, to the leather really sells for me. That works. The little touches on the the uh, whatever this is his hood I guess is really nice. Um, the two animals feel like they could have a little more variance, so you might have wanted to work a little bit of the color toning in there. They feel a little weaker than him to me. Uh, now as to the copper non metallic, I think it needs to go a little brighter, have a little bit shinier, sharp reflections and light catches. But color wise. Yes, it works. It just doesn't feel like it's getting quite bright enough. Assuming it's shiny copper, which that's the sort of level you're putting it at there, it does feel like it should still be coming up, integrating a little bit more of that gray tone you said was on your palette, and popping the light uh, a little bit higher. So that's what I that's what I would uh, that's what I would primarily work on. But overall, this is a really great piece. I dig it. I think he looks super cool. Um, yeah, the, you can see how the animal feels kind of flat here in the black and white, but the, you know, the gloves and the texture and stuff on the hood don't. Yeah, overall, I think that's where I'd come down. Just the little rats on our little Pied Piper, um, which, what a cool mini, or what a cool bust, this Pied Piper dude, playing his, like, weird flute weapon. I dig it. Okay. Uh, next up, Caleb. Uh, definitely lots of room for improvement. Um, spent, I specifically was working on wet blending, flesh, contrast, and color choice. Yeah, I mean, color choice is fine. The gold feels a little off, like, because the gold is too close to the yellow. You'd want to use a gold that's set aside somewhere. Uh, all in all, I mean, our main challenges here are, if you're going to do hazard stripes, they have to be very clean. So, like, you want to make sure that they're those are nice, sharp lines. And, you know, our blending on the flesh is still rough, so we've got some more room to grow there on blending that out. Again, like I had mentioned before, we jump from the deep shadows in between muscles into the into the normal tone way too abruptly and sharply like that needs to be smoothed out uh so that's the that's the things that really jump out at me so hope that helps okay next up um oh caleb you got two uh, you only have one per month uh so i'll assume you wanted it on the first one um the if you're going for like a light source yes it's too i'll answer your question quickly if you're going for a light source yes it's way too stark but i'm not sure what you're aiming at i'd say bring this guy along and then and like what would you do to bring it together glazes is the short answer but um you know glaze this together to create a more more seamless sort of transition but hopefully you share it in a future month uh nick um so uh, he's looking for tips with dealing with 3d print lines i have nothing for you on that there are primers that will fill them, but I, I really don't have an answer for you. It's one of the reasons I don't paint 3D figures. I don't like 3D print lines. I only use them for terrain. Uh, now, the feeling like there's something missing in the faces, especially at the eyes, and any drips on, on what can improve these. Um, no, I think your faces feel nice. Now, as to the eyes, they're very small on these. I mean, yeah, they could probably push out a little. Um, like, you you what you're missing is your light dot uh to like catch the the reflection of light that's what makes your eyes feel like not as alive as they could be because human beings have reflections of light in their eyes at almost all points in time it's called the life light and people like light for that very carefully in movies to make sure it's always there because without it the person looks dead and so that could be part of what's what's getting you um now the actual painting i think looks great the the denim looks fantastic the uh you know the color choices between them is great you know very much looking like the the sort of high school setting 
I like the hair. Um, the skin on some of her legs could be pushed around a little bit. We could have a little bit more, again, pink or magenta tone, in, especially down around her ankles or up around the top back of her thighs. Um, but on the whole, I think this is a really, really solid piece. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that you captured a lot of stuff here. You could bring up some of the highlights in his hair just a little. Um, most of this stuff is like, I mean, when we get to this kind of a level, we're talking extremely minor refinements because, Nick, you did a really great job here. So I'm, I'm afraid I don't have a ton to give you. It's mostly in the refinement of uh, maybe a few things like texture on the bags that they're carrying, uh, maybe like some scratches and stuff on his helmet because football helmets tend to be quite worn. You you know, high school football helmets, especially practice helmets, because it seems like they're coming back from practice or something. Um, those tend to be rather scuffed. Uh, and so, you know, that kind of thing is just little touches is probably the best way I would describe it. But overall, very cool piece. Okay, next up, Cole. Uh, first space marine you painted in edges, or in ages. Um, looking for feedback on the battle damage and the use of pigments on the boots. Um, and he asked a question of, have I released a video on oils on Space Marines? No, but it's coming soon. I'm actually editing it right now. Uh, okay, so, um, not at this exact moment. I'm doing this right now, but, you know, in this general time frame. Uh, yeah, the, first of all, the pigment, that's a simple answer. Yes, it works. I think it looks really nice. So, no questions there. Now, as to the battle damage, I'm not sure I'm really buying too much of it. I'm not sure I'm a buyer on that. Um, I would go back and watch my battle damage video again. So that's in like the 90s. You don't have the light being underneath the scratches. You don't have the depth of like the scratch, the different color variation that we should be expecting there. So both the bottom of the paint should show a little bit of light where it's chipped. In the paint, you should see variation where the, the, the thing didn't uniformly take out a chunk, but would have hit different areas of levels of the armor based on the randomness of the force of impact. So those kinds of things, I would go back and check that out. Also be careful, always make sure you're doing stuff like cleaning up this line where you see gold coming down the red. You wanna make sure your red goes back over the top and cleans that up, okay? So that's what jumps out of me. Hope that helps, Cole. All right, next up, uh, Amy, uh, advice on hair and working on getting that Pantene shine. Could you get some feedback? All right, let's talk about the Pantene shine, yes. Having the appropriate reflections in hair where it's catching light. I don't really have any hair to show you. so I can't do that, but you've captured the light really well here. This is great. You're putting it in the right places. We need to smooth a little bit of the blends out, but we need more individual lines. So more individual hashing going down into the shadows. Like this should be brought down a little more, a little more, a little more. Like you want to have a nice seamless transition the only part that really shouldn't show the lines and even then it should be maybe a few here and there is the deepest shadows because hair is you know composed of these thousands of tiny strands and so you want that to be you want to capture that with those little hashes if you go back and watch the how i paint white hair video i talk about this a lot um and you'll see me do the like little hashing you know trick there that's with white hair but you just do the same trick uh here but slightly differently i also have a painting black hair video um but at any rate, it's all its all just hashes. All little tiny, very sharp brush, very flowing paint, and little hashes. But you've, you've, had the, you've hit the light placement perfectly. So, yep, love it. Okay. Jacob. Uh, tabletop test model, still wasting uh, true metallic metal, how to improve atmosphere, color selection, and anything else that comes to mind. Well, I mean, I think if you're going for tabletop, you're fine. I'll just start there. Um, like, I don't think there's any issue. Where could you do? more texture more variation so i mean pretty standard stuff like the armor is pretty flat adding more color to that the leathers are pretty flat adding more intentional texture and scuffing to that the metals are pretty flat adding more intentional non-metallic style shading into the true metallic metals um adding more tones and color into the face like you know glazing more red into the cheeks or things like that around the side where the hair is those kinds of things are the steps i would take so Continuing to push the contrast on stuff like the purple, like on the leathers and the boots and bringing that up through the use of both just regular volumetric highlighting and texturing. Um, those kinds of things are where I would potentially push. But overall, I think for tabletop, it's a nice piece. So I do hope that helps. All right, Nicholas. Uh, first time posting here, aiming for high tabletop display standard. Uh, so you mentioned like these three things are volumetric lighting, color scheme, and general advice. So let's talk about these in sort of this order. 
Uh, color scheme. Color scheme's fine. No issue with it at all. Everything stands apart. Paint job's very clean. Colors aren't too, too, uh, too showy. The red is a little bit problematic up in his feathers. I would have brought that down a little bit more onto the guy. Maybe like a spine or his the the thing he's like the sheath of the weapon he's holding. Just a little bit more red down there because you've got a lot of red up here that isn't really balanced down here. That's the only compositional element that jumped out at me. Okay. The volumetric lighting that we didn't really do. So like I mean I can show that to you really easy. This tail is the same gray that the top of this arm is. If that's true, we don't have volumetric highlighting, right? Because the top of my arm is not the same color right now as the bottom of my arm, right? And this is what his tail should look like. This is what the top of his arm should look like. That's volumetric lighting, okay? So that that is a part that jumps out at me. Like, we do need to, the overall shading could still be deeper we could be putting more shadows more value contrast right uh that's the big thing that that i noticed there uh, but on the whole i like the shading on stuff like the gold i think that looks really natural and good uh i think the eyes the, like the gems in the eyes of the banner look fantastic the color scheme itself the dots and like the the texturing on those and the scales all a plus love all that stuff love the shading on the gold so I just think it's probably actually the gray skin that could use a little more actual sort of volumetric shading. But on the whole, I think this is a really good looking piece. You did a great job. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, okay, so next up, we've got Dave bringing up his uh, Slaneshi Chariot. Uh, hints and tips on how he can improve his highlighting uh, and the zebra stripes, sure. So with the zebra stripes, part of the problem is you're still painting them like you would normally paint with a layer when zebra stripes are actually, um, you know, if we just look at zebras. Let's just Google zebras, all right? Like their stripes look thick and solid. First of all, they're, they are more black. There's a lot more brown in the actual thing itself, but they are quite darker. They're very black brown. And... When we look at the the zebra, you're going to notice little indentations around there, right? And so in the scale, you want to be making it actually tiny little hashes. Like you can fill out the center of the line with the paint, and then you want to hash at the edge. And that's what will sell the effect. So here, you want it to be a nice, clean, like where you can see tips, you know, things like this. First of all, they're not black enough. That's number one. And then number two, you can see how they have this very natural pattern the the only sort of infractions in the line are really really small you can actually see it down on this guy really nicely right where you can see these little cut-ins of tiny little bits of white fur and that's how you need to get a real sharp brush and again line now as far as pushing contrast yes we definitely need to increase our our tonal variation around the model right and that means a lot of different things, like the skin of the driver, the armor, the gold needs more shading, um, all that kind of stuff. So I have lots of videos on adding contrast, and that's what you want to look at. So again, the skin needs to come up. Right now, you have a lot of just three and four around the miniature, not enough number ones, twos, uh, and fives, right? So like, if we just take the whip as a microcosm, like this should have a darker spot underneath. This should be brighter right here where it's bending against the light. Same as up here, right? Or you could pick a light spot here. It doesn't really matter. This part down here should be brighter. Like your light that you're under is actually creating a map for you. And you just need to reinforce those shadows to bring it into scale. Okay? So hope that helps. All right, next up. Uh, Chris, uh, first bus, would love to know how to improve. Sure. So... Uh, it's a little small, but busts are really, again, all about going as far until you think you're going to lose your mind and then doing twice as much. Okay, so the skin here looks nice. It could go farther. Um, this is a good image here. We'll look at this one. So the lighting is good, um, but we can go farther. We can up the lighting on like the T-zone versus the rest of the face, bring more pinks and those kinds of tones into the cheeks. Um, same with the area, more cast in shadow, a little bit more of like pink tones and stuff like that. Um, the little baby dragon, probably again pushing a little more contrast where he's lighter in certain areas, like the tips of the wings, the edges of his, of his wing leather, 
and then uh, you know darker in other areas. Um, whereas whereas wing is stretched more thin, you know, and light would be showing through more because it's not near one of the the little bone ridges. Um, same with like things like her hands, right? We need to have more detail. Your hands actually have like a ton of different color and pink and tones in them that are very light, but you need to be capturing all of that in there. That's that kind of stuff that I would say to go farther. Now, as far as the, the, the probably the place that jumps at me the most where we got potential is maybe something like the hair. And again, creating more of that like Pantene sheen where there's defined areas of light and shadow on the hair. But all in all, this looks really nice. Um, probably around the eyes, we need to have more coloration. Um, you know, I understand she's probably not wearing makeup as the mother of dragons, but uh, nonetheless, she still would have, there's like a natural coloration to this part of your eye versus the eyelid and those kinds of things that we want to be bringing out and pumping up a little more. So there you go, Chris. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, Carl. Um, feedback on the FEC. Um, tried focusing on skin texture and wondering if it sells. So I had looked at this earlier and the same problem here as I've talked about a couple of times in the video. We jumped too far from like five to two. So I, I understand, I think you said you're going for like a flayed look. In other words, like his skin was ripped off. Cool, I get that. But then we still need to have some kind of blend up between this deep red and the white. Or if you're not going to go that way, then there needs to be striations coming up where it looks like it was kind of sheared off, right? Um, and that kind of thing is going to help that sell. As it stands right now, when you have, especially when I look around the legs and I see the musculature like so completely defined where every piece has this like really dark line and then it jumps right up into your two, right? Where we just go five, two, five, two, five, two. Like it's too much too fast. So that's what's stopping it from selling, right? We need to, we need to smooth that out. You can sell the effect, but it can be through hashes that slowly transition the color. And that kind of texture will, will solve a lot of your problem. Uh, so hope that helps, Carl. But very cool take on a model. I, I love the, the concept behind it. I like the skin tone. All of that stuff works for me. We just need to smooth out those transitions. Uh, John bringing us uh, this guy. Uh, advice on how we can take it up to a competition level. So the, uh, the answer here is more, more, more. Um, like these sort of infinity miniatures, which I think is what this guy is, um, or something approximating that. If you look at how somebody like Angel Geraldes or, you know, Angel Geraldes uh, paints these, that's what you need to go for. These things need, to, every panel needs to have a thin, clean, dark line between it. The edges need to be highlighted and, and edged around. And then the reflection itself, the light needs to come up to like a darn near white or something really bright. You know, not actually white, but something in the, like an ice yellow, right? Where we're actually catching the reflective sheen on each panel and tracing it down. Um, any of uh, on Hell's masterclass volumes will be really helpful in this because they show you exactly how he goes about creating this. But if you can't get a hold of one of those books, just go, you know, uh, Google out any of the uh, infinity figs that he painted and you'll see exactly what he's doing. The gun is another area of interest that uh, is not very interesting right now, unfortunately. Um, it needs some more kick to it uh, as it stands right now. It just doesn't have enough variation, enough life. Like it's fairly gray with just some edges. We need to create more variation of value there, pick out a few pieces, make them a different color, you know, something like that to make that area have some kind of reason I want to look at it. It shouldn't be overwhelming, but it shouldn't just be basically lost against the background either, which is what's happening. So overall, like the color scheme, the color choices, composition is all good. The execution uh, on the colors that are there are good. We just need to take that up a notch. So hope that helps. All right, next up, Robin, uh, talking about the shoulder pads and the grip are supposed to be gold non-metallic, but that doesn't sell. Yes, correct. Um, and then the sword was mostly practicing blends uh, of being blue non-metallic metal. Sure. So as far as shadows go, he was going for like a Rembrandt shadow. I think that's fine. You need to bring a little bit over here. So like literally Google, all right, just so everybody understands, because I've mentioned this multiple times. So let's do Rembrandt shadows. Okay. So a Rembrandt shadow is this, where this side of the face is cast in deep shadow, and then you have the triangle of light here, right? And I mean, that's kind of what it's taken as, but it, it gets used a lot in photography and other types of, of painting, right? Where we have these hard light triangles, you can see down here where, you know, basically there's a triangle on this side of the face, and then everything else is cast in this deep shadow, right? Um, 
And like just Googling on that will give you a lot of good images to base it off of and you'll see how deep the shadows go. Now, as to the gold, it definitely doesn't. We need to come up to a white. There's not near enough one or two in there at all. And shape-wise, it should be, you know, it a shape like that, that cylinder, um, would actually probably have more of a, a cut horizontal line across it, and then the edges of the edge plates would be lit, and with one part popping out and creating like a, a vertical light line across it where it was hitting. Um, with the blue on the sword, again, one of the things you want to avoid is having the same color reach across both directions just evenly like this. It generally looks better if there's offset. Light against dark always looks better. So like this light was up here, this dark, you know, and this dark was down here. So then you had opposing colors and, and you continue to, to do that. And that'll generally do it. We also need to go brighter. We need more white. There's not enough number two, number one in here. Um, edges need to be all edged and, and like, psh, psh, all the way down and in this like blood imaginary blood channel a thing that doesn't exist but uh those need to be edged around the side as well um that kind of stuff is what's going to help that sell so hope that helps robin overall cool fig uh it's a neat fig i don't know where it's from but i like it okay next up sam uh feedback that's been given over the last couple of months take control of the light across the whole volume um reasonably happy with the texture but the magic glow needs some work on intensity and crispness crispness what i really uh wasn't really sure what to do with the sword i didn't want to do it as bright non-metallic um yeah so i think the glow is honestly fine i think that actually works quite well the red and then the yellow in the middle that actually sells for me i don't have much of a problem with that now as to the the volumetric highlighting i do feel that it's definitely there you're right i love the wood texture you've created we just need to go farther on it um, this whole area needs to be a little brighter. Same with here. Like we keep, keep pushing. Um, but you're getting there. Definitely. We're a lot closer than we have been. As far as the sword goes, I think it's, I think it's fine, but I would still, you know, you don't have to go full non-metallic, but just creating those areas of contrast, picking out the edges on the leaf sword and stuff. I've, I've painted all these different Kernoff varieties and, uh, with the swords, it's really just, you know, getting a light line on like the bottom of each of the things, each of these little like leaf cuts into there. Well, and then edging it and stuff like that will really make a big difference and make it stand out. But I think your texture is really good. Your your uh, your contrast is definitely getting there. We just need to push a little bit farther. But overall, I think you're definitely making some some great progress there. Okay, next up, Jim, uh, eighth mini. Uh, okay, overall contrast, texturing of the cloak and the OSL from the power fist around the face. Sure. All right, so. Um, I think that the lighting on stuff like the armor is pretty good. I mean, we could smooth that out a little more, but for your eighth mini, this is, you know, absolutely incredibly fantastic. So I don't really have issues there. Uh, the, as far as the individual elements go, again, work on just a little bit more of separation and making things clean in your light to dark. The texture on the cloak, I think works fine for me. I've got no issue there. That's, that's fine. Um... I think you could probably glaze a little bit more here toward the edge because we kind of end from abrupt texture to not a little too fast. Um, but beyond that, I don't really have much of an issue. And then the glow on the face. Uh, it's quite minimal. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it works. So you're going for kind of the Abaddon glow there, uh, or, you know, coming around the helm. Um I think it works. You'd probably need to punch it up a little bit more in the skin tone. And to do that, you need to take the skin and make it a more paler shade and then have the magenta actually show a little more. Uh, so I think that's probably what I would say. You know, if you look at all the pictures of Abaddon where his face is glowing, his face is generally very pale, and that's so they can show the contrast of the pale top versus the pink over here. And I think that would help it sell if that's what you're going for. Uh, but overall, cool stuff. Um, I like the little glow cast down here on the leg. I think that works. And uh, yeah, uh, great uh, great work with, or great conversion there from um, Tor Garadon into, uh, into the Crimson Fist. So yeah, awesome. I changed mine into a Crimson Fist as well. All right, Kevin, Maroc Wolf, first time trying oil paints. Any, should be, any advice would be appreciated. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely think you're going the right direction here. It's, uh, 
th it's good. I think you need to work on smoothing a little more. Um, so when you're using your oil paints, you want to make sure that they're you're you're really working in those colors and smoothing them out. Um, obviously, the conversion is you know excellent as always, Maroc. But yeah, I think just with the with the oils, you want to make sure that you're actually going in and rebuffing them in and really smoothing them out. That's the major place I see where we've got a bit of too much of a jump here in some places between some of the darker tones, not the blood streaks, because that's fine. But like here, where this is clearly a muscle line, that kind of thing needs to be smoothed out up here on the arm. Uh, in those areas is where I see the opportunity for improvement. So there you go. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, uh, bringing us a fish man. All right. Uh, so do do do, and just looking for feedback. Okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, I think this is really nice. I like the texturing on the banner. I think the the freehand on it works. Um, where I think we've got opportunities is largely in things like your, again, like I've mentioned a couple times, things like volumetric shading. His and and to just kind of get back to an image where this is going to sell. The top of his arm here is about the same color as the bottom of his arm here. Like the individual piece are picked out, but the whole volume, right, of the arm is not. So think it, you, you, you need to heed the whole cylinder and also the individual components. Same with like the fins as they get closer to his head, having more contrast there. Uh, same with like the lower part of his legs versus the top of his arms. Like this whole area should be brighter than this area down here. That kind of thing is is would be my chief recommendations for kind of where to go next. But overall, it's a really cool mini, and I'm super glad that you did well with it competitively. That's fantastic. He looks great. What a I have no idea what this is from, but it's a very neat mini. All right, next up, Mart. Uh, modeled a few miscast spots. Tried to hide with burns and likes. So appreciate some comments on the robe and the model as a whole. Sure. So I mean, the the story here is contrast, and we need a lot, 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 lot more of it. Um, you know, in the, end, in the end, the robe is basically a flat red, the cloak is basically a flat purple, and the fire is basically a flat green. And, and that's a challenge, right? We need to come higher with all of these. So I have an Exploring Colors Red series, I would highly recommend, and, and purple, I would highly recommend you go watch those. I tackle the contrast element in those. I have a green as well, and I talk about how to do magic uh, in the green series and what makes things look magical. But effectively, I just need a lot more highlights and shadows on all the pieces of the model. We've got to up the contrast of value here. That's going to be your number one thing, Mark. Uh, okay, next up, Kyle. Uh, all right. Uh, we've got our little crazy walker thing here. Uh, heavy antiquing on the gold. You definitely did go nuts with it. The uh, blood effect is certainly interesting. Like the eyes. I mean, this dude is super gross and weird. Uh, the antiquing, I would still, I would try to work in some color to that. I think your contrast is in the right place. This guy really does show the individual elements are nice, even with the damage. But I would try to work in some hints of color into the antiquing, uh, oxidation, verdigris, and the like. That could be a really interesting thing to put in the center of your, so like, let's just take this little chaos star as a, as a microcosm, right? You've got this really nice, interesting color transition on his little spider butt here. But like having some verdigreeing or, or stuff like that here in the middle, some turquoise and blue green, some pure verdigree in the middle of this would then help create new instances of that dark light, dark uh, changes. And that's what, again, the more of that, the more interesting the mini gets. So uh, overall, very cool, uh, very cool stuff. I dig it. That's probably the biggest thing that jumps out at me. Uh, next up, Aaron uh, tried to really push himself and go above just table ready. Um, feedback on relating to the color composition and where to push contrast. So um, the number one thing that jumps out of me is actually this guy's weapon. Um, we need to do more with that. It just kind of has like this airbrush situation and it's not, doesn't look like a weapon. It looks like a big piece of stone. Like if we're going to do this, we need to cut the edges, have shadows in here, have the edges, that sort of thing. Like actually have there be light and life to this blade. It feels like we just didn't give it the full, the full Monty here. Okay. Now, as to um, composition, it's fine. You're in sort of a standard Zinchi kind of color scheme with the pink, purple, and, and blue. This combination works just fine. I use it on my Slanesh as well. So you're on the kind of this chaos -y color scheme, I guess I should say. Um, and I think that 
Overall, the metals present the most opportunity for pushing additional contrast. Again, the metals are pretty flat. The gold is just gold. The steel is just steel. Um, glazing in additional inks, colors, and shades there, as well as popping out the highlights on things like the gold, I think is your, your big opportunity. Um, most of the purple feels right. Um, contrast in stuff like the leather straps, darker lines between brighter edges on the edge of the straps, making sure those are really standing out. Um, same with the straps up here. I, I hate leather straps on minis because they take forever, but they take forever if you want to do them right. And that means they need dark lines beside them and light lines on the edge with hashing and, and texture. And it takes a while, but it's worth it because it really changes the whole feel of the mini when you get those little individual leather straps all individually picked out. So that's probably the biggest areas I see, Aaron, and I uh, hope that helps. Overall, very cool take. I've never seen anybody paint uh, this guy quite like this, so very cool take. Uh, Daniel, uh, the king from Kingdom Death, uh, took the contrast advice to heart, really tried to push the two-color contrast on this model. Uh, sure, so, uh, the, f honestly, the flowers on his base is probably where we're going the most wrong. This mini would be stronger if he were amongst all of that. You've set it so aside that it's, the juxtaposition is too strong. Um, there's also a lot more bright yellow down here when I don't have any real matching yellow up here, right? Like I have, I have gold, which is true color is yellow, but it's a naturally desaturated version of it. And then down here I have pure true, you know, like moon yellow, right? Um, as far as the contrast goes and stuff like the pink, that's where I need to feel more of it. Uh, because we have these really deep shadows, but then basically it just goes five, four, three, and then we stop. Right? And the five, the four is pretty minimal. It's really just five, three. We're jumping quite a bit. A lot of these shadows are very harsh, very stark in how quickly they go over. Compositionally, color, if I block out this guy, the, the corner, and, and just like look at the mini itself, it's stronger than with the base. The stone also doesn't feel like stone. It feels like a cartoon version of stone because there's no texture, there's no cracks, there's no chips, there's no dirt, there's no life. It's just like, that's how I would sell shade stone. If that's why, if I was doing like a Transformers cartoon, right? So you want it like stone needs to feel as alive as the nature next to it. It just happens in different ways. Okay. Uh, and then, so like, I would really focus on popping up that tonal variation, that, that, that variation and contrast of value on there. And you can do that through the pink with things like introducing deeper magenta and purple hues into the shadows. And you can even use a unified uh, shadow scheme because you got blue here, so you could have unified purple as your scheme as well. So there you go. Hope that helps, Daniel. All right. Last up, Daniel, uh, different Daniel, uh, with, uh, he says the best he can do on a mini and like to know where he can improve his painting. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think it looks really nice. Uh, that's what I'll say first. And he said he knows like the blending needs some more work. So yes, I think overall what we need to be doing is again, pushing our contrast some more. Um, I mean, I say this a lot, but it is, it's just simply, I could do this show as in five minutes and just say, push your contrast more and it would cover 80% of every submission, <laughs> right? Like learn how to use your light, dark, light, dark changes in a more authoritative fashion. And again, go spend time looking at like, go look at Michael Pisarski or go look at Sergio Calvo or look at the, you know, the best artists in the world. And what you're going to see is they really have those individual areas and look, really see how, you know, I have a hobby cheating that's just literally us staring at a mini for 10 straight minutes. Spend 20 minutes, spend 30 minutes just staring, stare at one piece of it for 10 minutes and really understand what's going on there. Um, because for instance here, like the purple and the skin are not separated enough. This should fall more into shadow as we get near the cloth. And then this should come up into a higher highlight on the edge where it's catching the light. That makes that stand apart more. Same here underneath, uh, you know, where she's wearing like this tube top or whatever. Down on the side here, we need, you know, stronger shadows. In her face and her skin, we need more colors, more variation, more subtle glazes that set the light as to what's happening. Is she truly just standing in light at noon? Is there anything going on? Is there nature around her? You know, so moving into more warm lights and cold shadows, that kind of thing, introducing blues and blue elements into the shadows to make them feel more realistic. When you get up into this scale, and I think she's 75 mil, if memory uh, serves on this particular model. She's either 54 or 75. She's bigger is the point. Um, you know, you, you've got a lot more space, so you want to be really pulling and upping that, that feeling of, of contrast and effect. 
okay? Especially what matters here is the variation of not just uh, value of light and dark, and certainly things like the red and the purple do need more of that, especially in the in-between elements, but also variation of hue. You know, she's, I'll, I'll show you what I mean here. She's, let's flip around to this sort of back view. She's sitting next to a bunch of, of, of life and green, and, uh, you know, there's no green at all in her clothing. Even though it's red, uh, what we should, and green doesn't generally reflect in red, things like the purple would, if it's highly reflective cloth, or even just normal cloth, you're going to get slight tones that in there. So just like working in those little variations of hue, right? With the hair, it's the same thing. Look up, you know, the Pantene sheen and you'll, you'll see what I mean as far as, you know, getting that more defined area, more individual shadows, more light, more control of that. So there you go, Daniel. I hope that helps. Uh, but that brings us to the end of the month. Uh, with that being said, we end on some, uh, some sauce being cooked on my stove. And uh, there you go. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, certainly appreciate it. I hope this was all helpful. Thank you to everybody who submitted. Uh, it's always, always, always appreciated. Uh, like I said, in future months, um, we're probably going to need to organize something different to make this happen because it's like my time is just uh, such that it's hard to get time to do all this. And that's why I'm a little late this month. So I do apologize for that. But um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, for now, keep please keep submitting. And most importantly, if you're in the PMP, please keep responding to questions, answering, sharing, liking everybody's stuff, and helping out, and just generally being positive. You, the greater community, are what makes the PMP amazing, and that's what I want to keep going. I am not the critical lever here. It is all the rest of you who are absolutely incredible and are answering stuff and liking things and sharing your feedback every day. That's what makes this community incredible. So thank you all. If you'd like to join us on your hobby journey, again, link in the description. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.